Hello everyone, my name is Shabir Hussain Mustafa and I'm Senior Curator at the National Gallery, Singapore. The program you're about to view is titled Palukis, or Painter, Biography, Acting, Singing, which is a very special program held on 20th of August, 2021, in conjunction with the exhibition, Mohammed in Mohammed, The Mistaken Ancestor, co-curated by Theo Huimen and myself, as part of Something New Must Turn Up, six Singaporean artists after 1965. The exhibition, Mistaken Ancestor, charted the synthesis of the late artist Mohammed in Mohammed, his art, healing, and collecting practices over four decades. Presenting paintings, assemblages, and extensive materials from the personal archives of the artist and that of his wife and fellow artist, Madam Hamida Jalil, the exhibition offered insights into Mohammedin's lifelong commitment to harness the different facets of Sufism for the rejuvenation of the human body and spirit in contemporary Singapore. The late Mohammedin was many things, artist, healer, friend, poet, musician, family man, and fellow seeker in this journey we call life. He was unique for he personified many roles. He could be Guru Silat, Mohammedin in the morning, but also Mohammedin Palukis, an assemblage artist at night. He could be Mohammedin wandering the streets of Istanbul in search of dervishes, but also interested in technology and machines of Singapore. At one moment, he could be healing the sick from the privacy of his home, and at another moment, performing Sufi music to a public audience. Mohammedin was all of these energies combined and more. His talents and facets are well acknowledged by his contemporaries and peers. This program was organized on 20th of August and was therefore an attempt to further unfold these aspects of the artist through an informal gathering of his family. It takes as a starting point a 1998 theater play titled Palukis, which had the accompanying subtitle, Biography, Acting, Singing. Written and directed by S. Veera or Samsri Veera Basri from Theatre Bhavi and Singapore, the play was a biographical account of Mohammedin's life as he navigated the travails of art, silat, healing, spirituality, and middle-class family life. Mohammedin, being an actor, naturally played himself in the production, with many of his family and friends also performing as themselves. The play, Palukis, dramatized a life-altering motorcycle accident in 1982 that almost resulted in the amputation of Mohammedin's foot. His recovery ha happened under the care of his Silat masters, which eventually turned him towards the practice of traditional healing. The play also synthesized at times with witty humor, his multiple roles as artist, family man, healer, actor, and musician. During its climax, Mohammedin achieved his goal of holding a solo exhibition of his art. Palukis highlighted how an artist's quest only becomes meaningful with the support of his loved ones. We therefore experimented by organizing a family reunion bringing together some of the original cast members of Palukis, as well as a whole set of newer characters that include the late artist's children and siblings. As at present, many family reunions occur on teleconferencing. And so it was apt that this event took place on Zoom, with everyone invited to share stories about the late Mahmoudin and obliquely ponder can art and life become interchangeable facets of the same phenomenon? The session was not authored or moderated by the National Gallery. Instead, we invited Madam Hamida Jalil, wife of late Mohammed Din, and his daughter Nadia M. Din to facilitate the conversation. The end result was intimate, filled with laughter and at times even solemn memories. Who was? Palukis moment in moment to his loved ones. For me, as the gathering progressed and stories were swapped, 
I came to realize that Mohammedan's lifelong investments in the knowledge systems of the Malay world came to be animated in such incredible ways through his family. He had, over the years, shared his knowledge with those around him so it could continue to play a role in their everyday lives long after he had passed. Perhaps this is something an exhibition in a museum can only aspire towards, but never fully achieve. And I suppose that act of recollection that we observe in Palukis may potentially become a vector for imagined futures. So thank you, everyone. I shall stop before I reveal any more spoilers. I would like to just offer my special acknowledgements to my colleague, Ms. Lynette Lua, from the curatorial programs team and the entire curatorial programs team for having worked tirelessly to make this gathering possible. And so with that, please enjoy the magic, the storytelling, the laughter, and the tears and contemplation that made up Palukis, biography, acting, singing, a reunion of the Mahmoudin Mohammed family. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum to all. Um, thank you, Mustafa, for the beautiful speech and the introduction. Um, as so many of you know that I am the wife to the late of uh, Muhammad Din Muhammad. Um, thank you to the team. I would like to thanks to the team uh, of National Gallery Singapore, um, late Din's siblings. Without them, um, it won't be very uh, beautiful picture in the family. And um, I would like to thank to my children for making time to make this uh, Zoom happen. Thank you so much. Um, this special event titled Lucas will cover much of late Din or Abanga, as we all always say, as a loving brother, husband, and a father. And um, actually, this one to those who actually uh, just this one to those who have just registered in, I would like to welcome them to. So there are people outside who are also um, looking into this Zoom, and I would like to thank them for um, to, to be with us. Um, we hope you will enjoy this special program and get to know more about uh, LinkedIn better through the eyes of his loved ones, not just through his works, which are now in the museum. Um, the last day is going to be on Sunday. So not just through his, uh, his, um, his works, through his, uh, through his works, but also through the very people who watch him grow from being a son to a brother, husband, and a father. Um, apart from his works, his entire life actually is also about his family and close friends. Um, so I don't want to take much of time. I would like just to thank you to Mustafa, Quimin, Lynette and the team, and not, forget, not, not forgetting National Gallery Singapore for initiating this Zoom meeting with the, fam with the family and my children. Um, and also now I would like to hand this over, my session to my daughter, Nadia Emdin. Thank you. Wow, I can see that everybody is like very serious and very tense. Why not before anything, we unmute ourselves and just say, hello everyone. Okay, just unmute yourself, please. Unmute, unmute, unmute. Hi everyone. Hello. 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 Hello.
Test, no, test one, test two, test one, test two. Saying attention, not tense. Okay. Yeah, Habibi, yeah. Maulana. All right, all right, all right. Hey, relax, relax. Okay, you guys can mute yourself already. Let me talk. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so first of all, um, on behalf of uh, the whole entire family, I, Nadia M. Din, of course, the daughter of uh, the late Muhammad Din Muhammad, would like to really express our gratitude and would like to thank everyone, especially for those who registered. You know, you went uh, all the way to, you know, register just because you really want to know deeper about uh, the late artists and... I truly hope that with this uh, session, everyone will get to know a little bit better about him, but not just about him, but the history, how he was as uh, when he was younger and his whole entire experience when he was um, in this life. Okay, so uh, we are not only having our my siblings on our Zoom, I'm very happy to see all my beloved aunties and uncles, which we have not been able to meet for the longest time due to COVID, unfortunately. But inshallah, one day Allah will bring us back together again. Uh, so with here, I would just like to introduce uh, one by one. Okay, we're going to be very brief, uh, just for the betterment of the people who are watching us, so they understand better who are also involved in this Zoom at the moment. Okay, so we would like to say hello to Auntie uh, Rokia. Rokia Mohamed is the first sibling. Okay, and then we also have, uh, 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 we have Sadiq Din, we have Maria Din, Sherry Din, Akram Din. You guys can just say hi when you hear your name. Rashid Din, Sarah Din, and Alim Din. Okay, so just for your information, right, everyone. Uh, at the moment now, my father's siblings, the ones who are reciting here, they are only um, Auntie Maria, Uncle Sadiq, and that's all. Yes, so the rest of them are actually across the border. And that's why this Zoom is very, very special to us because I feel that um, prior to this whole COVID and prior to my father's late uh, passing, we always have, have family gatherings. A lot of times we have family gatherings, doesn't matter where. Sometimes uh, Uncle Rashi will come up with some silly joke and he will make some music. And not just Uncle Rashi, but Uncle Sadiq, all the jokes, you know. So I can't wait today for everyone to get to know the family better and closer, inshallah. Uh, before I begin, uh, apologize for any shortcomings, but let's hope everything is going to be good today. Okay, so we're going to kick off today with a question that it's going to uh, be open to everybody. Okay, and I really love this question because I think everyone's got a lot of things to say, to, to share your experience with the late artist Muhammad Din Muhammad. So the first question would be, what was the fondest memory you have with Din? We can start with anyone. If you have, you want to share anything, any story. Yeah, let me start. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> the fondest memory for me with my late brother was uh, in the forest. We will always be in the forest, in the jungle, throughout Malaysia, uh, looking for herbs. Yeah, because he was uh, uh, healing people. So uh, he produced his own herbs. We made into uh herbal drinks uh peels and um, we spend a lot of time uh, traveling and at the same time we will visit some of the master healers uh, throughout malaysia some uh, uh they are sufis also because he was so enthusiastic uh to learn even more uh, the art of healing and even martial art so my fondest memory will be with him in the forest uh sometimes we are just uh, both of us sometimes we are in a group with uh, my uh, brother Rashid also. And at times we were, he will just bring a sardine a can along, a raw sardine, yeah, some raw it. onions and chilies. We will have a uh, sardine with bread in, in, in the forest. So I can still smell the sardine now. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most enjoyable time, yeah. And uh, we met, um, yeah, we had a lot of experience uh, in the jungle, in the jungle, yeah. Okay, over to you, Nadia. Okay, anybody else? I'm sure everyone has got something to share. Jangan malu-malu. <laughs> Auntie Maria, you look like you have something to say. Okay. <laughs> My fondest memory was um, when he got me to be um, kind of like a model at his NAFA when he just started at the NAFA school. And after, <laughs> after school, I was in secondary school, maybe sec one, sec two, yeah. Uh, like, after school, I was really looking forward, you know, 
and I will take the bus right down to Orchard Road. The old Nafa was at Orchard Road, right? So I will be this model, you know? So all the students are painting me, you know? And I came to know all the teachers and everything. And I was paid like $14 for one session. And that was huge at that time because our, our late father only gave us like 50 cents for, for, for recess. So to get $14, to be sitting there and people will draw me, I kind of like, wow, I, I, I became like superstar. And then the art teacher will say, oh, here comes Sophia Lauren. Wow. <laughs> I was so flattered. At that time, I do not know who Sophia Lauren even. <laughs> but but for the fact that, you know, the way she said it, like, oh, must be some beautiful woman as well. Oh, then I know. Yeah, Sophia Lauren was really beautiful. Yeah, that was that. Eh? You, I, I was going to add on to that actually because we, we actually take turns to go to uh, Nanyang Academy Napa. of Fine Arts ah, okay. to propose <clears throat> for his uh, batchmates of, of student artists at that time. So we, I had a very huge uh, age gap, right, with my with yeah, yeah. And um, so I, I wouldn't take the bus on my own. He would take me to uh -huh. you know, go with him and on the bus to go to Nafa. So, you know, having that sort of private time with him, with my much older brother, uh, was something really very special. The only difference is that I would pose, but never get paid for it because I was too young. So he took my money. <laughs> my mother got paid for it because she was older. About $14. So the money. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, was, that was the difference. So we took turns to actually go there and be the model for the student artist. The other thing I wanted to say very quickly is that the other thing that was really very, you know, that stuck in my mind was to walk into his uh, studio at home where all his paintings and brushes and everything, you know, were and walking in and that distinct smell, right, which you all are very familiar with, you know, that, that, that smell of Hell, art, okay. right, beautiful art, but the room would be like, would be like a shipwreck, it would be, you know, chaos with, with, with things all over the place because he, you know, he, he's just painting, so he would actually pay me to to clean up the room, to organize the room, you know, to put the things together and all that. And at that time, I would get $5, but I have to remind him many times to say, you promised me $5, so I've already cleaned up your room. I'm, I'm coming to collect my $5, you know, my $5 at that time was just like really huge for a little girl like me. So it was really nice. Okay, uh, one more thing, Maria. Um, Late Dean always say you are, the, you are one of his best students in the Silat. Oh my God! You know what? That one. Uh, oh, don't, oh, oh, oh. don't don't mention that he forced us all girls to be learning silat, right? You know yeah. how difficult it was. Yeah. It wasn't like the ground wasn't cushioned like right now. It's in a kampong, and then we have to clear the the hard ground, you know. And if you're unlucky, then you you will tumble your silat at the corner. Then your back will be kanate ayam, you know. Uh -huh. Chicken shit is there because it's in a kampong. And then you know, of course, with bruises and elbows, sometimes we can't even walk properly after the silat session. And then he will tell me, um, <clears throat> Kagam, uh, I want you to spa with this boy. Boys, oh, yeah. That's what he told me. In, in the kampong, you know. And then he said, I'll be your manager. He became a manager, you know. To make <laughs> me fight with the kampong boys. <laughs> but being a fighter, I kicked them. They flew and they went into the drain. I mean, my sparring guy. Lah. You know, that was how much confidence he had in me. Yeah. Because he can see that I'm really a fighter. And then my sparring partner is always boys he said girls will not be able to take me because i am very daring yeah one thing, one when you're thing, very tough and rough yeah <laughs> he always picks me up with boys to fight with boys one thing i can say about him is that he uh he he always had the uh you know the idea that we are you know uh, we will be able to do it and we will excel and we'll be the exactly. best exactly so uh when we were doing silat right of course, I was so plaka, uh, right? Because I'm so tall and thin, you know, like Pink Panther. And then, yet yeah, I have to do silat. And then he sent me for a competition. And then, the sparring partner for my competition was, was so very experienced. 
Oh, is it? I'm gonna wag my the fella. <laughs> but then but, but but did your brother, which is like my father, did he like warn you or anything before he or he just throw you in the pit and say, "Nah, Sherry." No, he'll like just like uh, he pick he pick you on the spot. Yeah, he's like our random, very random. Took you. Our brother was it so. you and you, then you spar. Ah, man, like our father, kan? Our our father also. He'll just go bring us to the deep side of the of the laut and just throw us. Yeah, in. and throw us in the sea. And and I remember my late father also will dunk my head in the water. The same way. So when he picked me for competition, I wasn't ready at all because I was just new and I belajar main pedang semua yang kelakar. Can you imagine? I was a teenager, you know, main pedang sampai berapi berapi pedang kecil. And then about painting, ah. Eh? I can draw for nuts, right? You know, my drawing is like the even now you want me to draw, I'll still draw the same as when I was in primary one. Same, <laughs> and then you know there are paintings of uh, uh, Rock Hudson. You remember our living room, the kampung living room? Yeah. Right. So we have all these uh, paintings of famous, uh, famous portraits of famous uh, actors in the those Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck. He he brought his drawing block. He made me sit at the dining table. He gave me his uh <laughs> charcoal pencil or whatever. He said, "Here yeah, you sit here and you draw. You pick any face here on the wall and then you draw." I was like, "Huh? I'm not gonna draw. I don't know how to draw." But then I drew. You know, and he said, "Wow, nice." It's good. Oh, actually, it wasn't at all. <laughs> he just want to give me confidence, and maybe he want to make me an artist too. After the sea lad, he make us all with the sea lad, and then he want us also to be a painter. <laughs> That's actually quite funny. It's funny that I actually have no idea about all this story, and it's so nice to hear because it's something <laughs> first hand and something new. Okay, I I think I would really um be interested to listen to the eldest, you know, uh, Auntie Rokia being the one that's Probably the longest with uh, our Baba. What would be your best and your fondest memory? So maybe after Auntie Rokia, we'll move on to one of my sibling. If you guys have anything to share, we can probably pick one or two. Okay, so Auntie Rokia, take it away. Any story? Actually, I don't have much to share because, as you all know, I was in Pakistan all all my life. So what I have to have do, lah, your huh? birthday. You know, yeah. Uh, I I have only the, the my memory all gone already. When you wait, <laughs> <laughs> memory all gone. Don't bed it. 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 Don And she's so soft. He's the soft one, you know. So there's nothing actually going on between them. <laughs> <laughs> there's okay. no fight, no arguments, you know, stuff like that. When she was uh, like eighteen, were you eighteen that time? I don't remember. When you were in Singapore, you know, uh, like siblings, you fight, right? Kakak so, Rokia, you went to Pakistan for what reason? Why were you separated from the family here? No, she she papa sent her to school in Pakistan because she yeah. was to go in with somebody there, right? So, but oh. she came when she was eighteen and she lived in Singapore for a few years. So yeah. I was looked at her and our banga, and they all much some like, you know, much it's a different category from us, you know. <laughs> Especially with Sadiq. Oh my God, we can fight and then we chase each other around the kampong, <laughs> but with our brother. Did nothing, you know. It's just oh. I think nothing going on. Yes, uh, Uncle Akram. Sister Rokia had a very special relationship. Yes, they had a very strong bond. Uh, actually, yeah, the bond is like yeah. cool, cool oh, people, God. both cool people. That he he was so loving and caring, and um. Such a what a lovely soul is always in my prayers. 
I can, uh, I remember when I, I was going to Pakistan in 1975, he, he taught me uh, what to recite every day for my protection. Doa. Doa. So many doas. And tangkal also he gave me. And susu harimau and I don't know what the kayu-kayu and the batu-batu all. I, I, I took with me to Pakistan mm, and keep with me special, everything was special for me. Yeah, and for me, when I was uh, sitting for my O-level exams, he actually gave me a minyak. <laughs> you know, something, a, a kind of a, a perfume that she, he told me to put it on your exam papers and you will score high marks because <laughs> you're, you're Love it. Oh, uh, that's how you got your degree and everything. You know, I did that and I really scored straight A's for my O levels. You didn't share uh, it with me. <laughs> I, do you still have do you still have the minya? <laughs> yeah, I think Abai, you might need it, right? For back when you're in school then. Okay, but uh, I, I really love thank you so much everyone for sharing so far. But I would really love to hear from Uncle Rashid, being someone whom I know as an uncle who's always very cheeky, he's always up to something funny. Is there any experience that you've had with uh, late uh late Dean that until today you will not be able to forget in terms of like any funny experience or thrilling or you both did something naughty together is there anything you want to share uh uncle rashid well uh, actually what i am today is partly because of uh because of him is uh, but mine is more like a love and hate relationship you see uh when I was in primary one, he's already like, I think, uh, finished O-level. So, uh, on one hand, he's uh, like my idol. I, I, uh, I wanted to, uh, to be like him. Uh, I, I admire his uh, multi-talent. And I wanted very much to be like him. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I was at the appropriate age for, for him to, uh, to spend. Uh, Akram was too young. You know, when he finished his level, when he was like 20, 21, I think I was like in primary three, primary four, the appropriate age to, to support, you know? Uh, yeah, there is one this feather duster at home. Feather duster. You know the agony of having to, you know, when you want to spank me, you say, go and get the feather duster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I don't get the feather duster, he will use his hand. So, <laughs> I have to go and press the feather duster, give it to him for him to spank me. <laughs> Not self service, huh? <laughs> <laughs> see, Why did uh, you get it? <laughs> you see, I was uh, like ten years younger than him, so he's I'm like his like young young little brother, and he wanted very much to to discipline me, uh, protect me. You know, you know, in the village, when I have problem with the other boys playing, I just need to shout his name. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they call him Maja, you know. Mm. When I got bullied, I just shout, Maja! So he would just look up from the window and the boys all run away. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so he, he was like my saviour lah, you know. Every time kena bully, I'll just shout his name. And then, uh, but he's, you know, a very strict elder brother lah to me, you know. You know, when, when it's raining day, eh, when, when we used to play in the... You know, there's a lot of water in the drain, you know. We'll just go in the drain and mandi longkang, you know. And then, you know, once he, he see me like that, uh, then watch out lah, you know. So, I, at one hand, I, I, I admire him very much. Uh, on the other hand, I hate him because he always spank me. <laughs> <laughs> but I know he, 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 he wanted to, to discipline me, wanted to, to take care of me so that, you know, I grow up, become somebody, you know. Um, I, I can say, actually, he probably did that 
because you jolly well deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you always, Akram and I always got bullied by you. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. a duster. All exposed already. <laughs> the, uh, the last time I got, I got spanked by him when I was, I was fighting with, with Maria in the kitchen. <laughs> I, I thought my fighting. sparring partner is uh, Sadiq. No, at once I was wrestling with you in the kitchen, and then <laughs> then he 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 came out. So when I when I saw him, so I thought I wanted to impress him because I wanted to impress impress him that I can fight. So I really fight lah. So after that, after Maria locked me ready, I cannot move. <laughs> no? And then uh, this, some fighter, anti Maria. And then this, okay, okay, uh, the WTB. And then he came to me, he gave me one spang behind my head, and everything goes like like an echo. No? Then he lectured me and lectured and lectured, and then he told me to follow him into his room uh, downstairs, got one room. I was just standing there, nangis, tear, tears flowing. He was lecturing, lecturing, lecturing. After he finished lecturing, he thought I would just go away, right? I was just standing there. They say, Dala, pergilah. Aku nak tukar baju. Kalau tukar tu, aku bogel tu. <laughs> and then I laugh. <laughs> I laugh and walk away. So, as I said, uh, much of what I am today, like uh, involvement in the spiritual, uh, mysticism, all was because of... Um, is uh is guidance la it's guidance uh same with sadik also no we we learn a spirituality from the same master we learn mysticism from the same master uh, that's about it for now Rashi, I recall that you were involved uh, with even me and Katimi and my mom, Hamida, uh, on the theatre play called Pelukis. Oh, yeah, the Pelukis. Huh? Yeah. yeah, so actually, would you like to share with us? Because honestly, for me, I was just a five-year-old girl who went on stage. I forgot my script because yeah. I was too overwhelmed by the whole lighting and the spotlight on <laughs> stage. But that was my first moment where I felt like, okay, Papa, I want to be an actress. But what about you, Uncle Rashid? Was there any uh, nice moments when you were sharing the same stage with uh, our, our father? Yeah, as you know, at that time, I was really in, uh, involved in a theatre. Actually, my involvement in theatre also was due to him. You <laughs> see, when uh, he, he brought me along for, for script reading at SBC at that time, so one of uh, the uh, head of a, a drama club uh, 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 told Dean that uh, I want to borrow your brother uh, for my group. So, so I uh, I went to that club and went for uh, for script reading and 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 they liked me and so from that on I became involved and in, uh, got involved in uh, theater and I acted you know as you know on stage, uh, radio and TV. That was years ago and also uh, directed some stage plays also. So at that time when Pelukis was, uh, you know, uh, supposed to be uh, played on stage, uh, you know, the role uh, supposed to be, uh, that was, was part for um, M. Nase. So Rosli Mualim was in Singapore, so Rosli played his role. So for M. Nase, uh, they say, okay, I uh, told uh, 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 Samsri Vira Basri, the, the scriptwriter and director, to, to get me since I had some experience uh, in acting. And uh, for me, it's just uh, for me, it's just another theater which I, I had to, to give up my best, you know. Um, but on that uh, on that day, I you know, I never paint, I never paint my whole life. But on that day, I paint on stage. On stage, I paint and completed one painting. Uh, that is the special uh, thing. Like if you ask me regarding Pelukis uh, Theatre, for me, the special thing is that I painted the one and only time in my life on that day, on stage. Yeah. 
Uh, oh wow, Masya Allah. I didn't even know this. Do you guys know about this? <laughs> oh, okay. Someone painted on stage. Uh, it must be that one lah. I mean, must be that one we 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 attend we watch. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm uh in pelukis. I only remember that uh my my mum, <laughs> my so called mother. Um. Do, sure. do you remember her name? I don't remember. I cannot recall her name, but I remember like. I was so uncomfortable calling her mom, <laughs> calling her ma in that theater because I was like, um, I mean, being uh, in, you know, like acting and all that. I was in school also. I, I mean, I was doing uh, theater also. Uh, but the thing is that at that point, I think I just started to learn how to do it. Then I think uh, Arwapa also saw that I have some sort of interest. I mean, of course, you had more interest, yeah, yeah, because uh, you were so dramatic. But my interest was more of like singing, um, you know, um, also doing the martial arts and also doing some of the acting. Um, then, but it was quite uncomfortable uh, at that time to call someone else, um, uh, yeah. I, I don't know how you felt at that time, because uh, you were quite young. Uh, well, for me, it was uh, it was a very nice experience because it was my first uh, theatre experience. But <laughs> I remember after that day, we went back home. Um, Papa, after he showered, he I really decided that I really wanted to be an actor and actress on that particular day after the whole experience, mm -hmm. despite being nervous, despite being with the, on the spotlight and there were a lot of people, there were so many eyes on us. And then my father say, just go for it, baby. I still remember. I'm sure he applied baby on any one of my siblings as well. Okay, talking about siblings. Except, except for me. Uh, yeah, because you're very naughty. Okay, now, maybe I want to hear from you. Uh, Abang Ayli Ghazali. Uh, Ghazali is of uh, my elder brother, okay, which is the first uh, son in the family. Do you have yeah. any fond memory which you'd like to share with us? MashaAllah. Um, talking about fond memories, actually, I have a lot. Um, I'm the second child of the late Muhammad Din Arobapa, uh, the first son, um, Habri is the second, uh, which is our last siblings. Okay, I'm turning 40 this year, next month is my birthday. 40 already, Ade! And, Are you hating us to buy your present? <laughs> uh, no. So, um, I spent my life 27 years with my late father and 13 years without him. Um, and within that 27 years, um, I can say like he managed to, to instill a lot of amazing values. Um, first and foremost, the values that he always, he know what is my weakness, what is my strength. So from day one, he will always say this to me. And I believe he also said to all the siblings also, which is, Buat kerja, pakai akal. So when you want to do something, so use your brain. Because you know, I'm I don't use my brain most of the time. Last time. Uh, no, no. So, again, Papa always say, buat kerja, pakai otak. No, he said akal, akal. Buat kerja, pakai akal. Uh, buat kerja, pakai akal. Okay. So okay, the fondest memory I had with my late father was I remembered we was very young. I think I was in primary school, primary five. Uh, we went to Malacca. Uh, to Kampung, he my uh he was limping because his thing his leg was not okay during that time. He know my hobby. He know I'm very passionate about catching spiders, about catching spiders, and I'm the king of fighting spiders once upon a time in Singapore. Wow. And, then, and, yeah. and teach me to be the queen. <laughs> yeah. So and people even buy you know spider from me last time. Uh, okay, so. I remember we went to Kampung. Um, we stayed at our relative house, our Nenek Lang punya rumah, her house lah. And then later at night, uh, I think he realized that I'm I'm way too bored lah. So he told me, "Ay, uh, tomorrow morning you follow Papa. We want to go somewhere." Then I said, "Oh, okay, good. Go somewhere. Okay lah. At least go somewhere lah." So I was expecting going to the market or going to the pekan or not or something like that, but. Uh, he said, no, Bapak ajak kau, let me bring you where I used to catch my spiders when I was young. 
So that's what he did. So it really took me by surprise. He was limping. He had a lot of things to do. He managed to steal a little bit of that time to just show me and bring me to the place. He took my hand. He bring me to the place. Uh, Ayi, Ghazali, this is where Bapa used to catch my spiders. And I'm going to catch one spider for you today. So he told me that. So what he did, I was um, sitting, I was leaning against a, a, a tree, I remember. He was limping down the hill. And I was like, he was limping down the hill and he needed to catch, he wanted to catch spider for me. And catching spider is not easy. That's, you know what I saw? I saw him doing some prey. He was like, and then he was blowing at that area. I was like, I was looking in awe. What is father doing? He don't have to catch the spiders, I think. The spiders come to him. So what he did, he just went to a spot. He just saw a leaf. He just took a leaf. Then he told me, get the plastic. Get the plastic quick. So get the plastic. Then he throw the, plastic, the leaf inside the plastic. Voila. I was so surprised. The biggest fighting spider I saw ever in my life inside that plastic. Wow. Did you ask him what was the do'a? Wow. No, I was I was I was so excited. I was so surprised. I, I this is out of this world. I need to learn whatever that he is praying. You know? <laughs> then I sit, I, I cried. I cried. I was so happy because of the spider. Then I can never forget lah, until the day I die. He said this, I uh Bapa do this because you are my son, because Bapa love you. Uh, Bapa do this because I love you, because you are my son. You are my only son. So that time I was his only son. Then thinking of that, that, that very moment, thinking of all the bad things that I've done, you know, it's, it's, that feeling can only come from God through him for me, lah, especially for me. Because this is the same story that I will be telling my child, my children, and my grandchildren. And now I'm very, I'm happy that I can share with all of you. I chose a perfect time to actually share this time to all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Abangi. Okay, before we move on to our next question, I think uh, there's someone in this chat room that has been very quiet from the very beginning. I would like to hear a little bit from him all the way from Malacca to one <laughs> Anindin. How are you? Unmute, unmute. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Okay, Uncle Ali, uh, before we move on to our next question, which, which is also a very interesting question, which I think you can also uh, relate with regards to um, medicinal uh, healing, uh, traditional healing of Arabapa. But maybe before we go on to that question, uh, is there anything you would like to share? Any nice experience you had ever had with Father? Uh, okay. I did not spend much time with uh, Arwa Bande, did I do, yeah? So I grew up with another person. I've got very little recollection uh, in my younger days. I remember him as someone who used to sit in his art studio doing his own painting, you know, when I used to visit our kampong. Uh, then after many, many years, I think he and uh, Kakak Rokia were the ones who found me uh, eventually. By that, by the time I had grown up, yeah, I was still with another family. Uh, so roughly, I spent only around fourteen years with my brother. Fourteen years that I, but the fourteen years were the most beautiful years of my life. Uh, for instance, the first thing was he was the one who brought me to Malacca the first time. Okay, we went. In, I remember his old car, but it blue or green car. I cannot remember now. White, white. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that old car, he brought me to Malacca. He said, just the two of us, two brothers. 14 years in difference between me and him. He was older than me, 14 years. So he said, let's go to Malacca today, and I will introduce you to all our relatives in Malacca. So that was the first time in my life I went back to Malacca. I met Matla, Matrishu, and then he said, this is my youngest brother, you know, the one that many, many years none of you met. So he brought me to Malacca, the first one. Uh, we enjoyed, we spoke along the way about, about herbs and, and he, you know, he, he had this, he had this, uh, what called mystical binoculars. 
teropong teropong you know dia buat teropong ada air dia cari buat tadi alien bawa pokok itu ada kayu bertam dia say bawa pokok itu ada apa tongkat ali he knew he knew the trees that had medicinal herbs below he could see so he, he totally enjoyed it and then uh, he was also the first one who brought me and introduced me to the uh, study uh Sadiq was still in west coast then i still remember that day the fateful day he brought me and he said Sadiq saya ada surprise dia tak cerita apa tu ini lah adik kita adik kita yang bungsu and then Sadiq i remember Sadiq gave me a sapphire you know a half blue half white half white sapphire uh say ni tanda abang jumpa adik kali pertama you know so so arwah abang Jane was very instrumental in a uh, You know, introducing me and bringing me back to the family. Uh, that 14 years is a beautiful, beautiful memory I shared with him. Uh, then, when he took me as his disciple as well, you know, he, I, I never, I never, I mean, sorry, I don't have memories of our late father except when he used to come and meet me once in a while. But then, after meeting uh, our late brother. He became like a fatherly figure to me. Although I was in my early twenties, but not only as a fatherly figure, as a brother and as a master. So he taught me a lot of things. I remember his uh, his most uh, the, the the thing that advice that I most remembered. Uh, he used to tell me was he used to say, "Alim, abang ini umpama mas yang telah digali." I'm I'm like a gold mine which has been dug up. You know, all you gotta do is be close to me, and I'll give you all the ilmu that I have. You know, but this this was what he used to advise me most of the time. You know, abang ada lah lumbu mas yang kalian digali, alim tinggal nak kumur aja mas mas itu. Kamida was also there many times that he used to tell me this. You know, so a lot of things. You know, every every weekend we used to share. We used to take. Turns for the recital of our Quran, you know, used to come to my place, and then the next Thursday will be another house, you know. So those were the beautiful memories that I had with him, and of course, uh, he even at one point allowed me to to host or to organize his art exhibition at one time. At one time, I I did uh, organize his art exhibition, and yeah, we had quite a lot. A good turnout then, and you know, he he allowed me to do a lot of things. So. He was one brother, which uh, a long lost brother, which I really cherish, and I did spend much time with him roughly around fourteen years. But I think those were the most beautiful memories I had. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alim. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, everyone, for the first. Uh, Well, that was just the first sharing. Yeah, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Okay, so uh, before we proceed, I just would like to also reach out to the people who are currently watching us right now on Zoom, the public. Uh, please feel free. We currently have one questions on our Q and A poll, and the question is actually going to lead us to our next question that which I'll be asking the family. Uh, so if you guys have any question, please uh, feel free. Don't be shy. You know, you can literally ask anything, anything that you feel uh, triggered to ask. You can ask on the Q and A section. Okay. Terima kasih semua. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to something. Uh, as we all know, just now Mustafa also introduced um, the late Dean as a traditional healer, and I think none of us here can disagree. Uh, you know, like especially me being his daughter and all of my other siblings, we have always been um, educated in terms of uh, 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 the knowledge of eating uh, right. You know, being treated by traditional healing like halia, ginger, and everything else. So I think my next, it, this brings me to my next question, which is, um, has anyone received any treatment from Din and when they were injured or feeling unwell, and what was the process? And I think uh, I would like to specifically ask my sister. Uh, Sakina and Din to share with her her experience because uh, I believe everyone probably recalled that she had a quite a terrible accident and my father decided to take the whole uh, responsibility on him alone and Sakina please take it away. Yeah okay hello everybody hi everybody watching me on zoom okay my experience with my dad was that Um, I got into an accident and I broke my shin bone. 
So I, I was on the way from I was on the way from school to home. So uh, I fell in a drain. I fell in a drain, and then I was so panic. Um, I told my friend to call my dad, and then luckily my school was just like a walking distance to to home. So less than about 10 minutes, he came to the place where I met with an accident. Then I, yeah, it was very bad, painful. Or like the blood was like soak my socks was like soaking wet with blood. Um, so he checked on me. He said, okay, did you break any bone? I don't know. I don't know. I was, I was crying in pain. So he took me home. First, I was so... Uh, so touched that he could carry me up to home because we were staying in the second story. So I was heavy. I was like 65 kilo. So he piggybacked me. He piggybacked me up home. And I was like, oh, my, my dad was like limping. I knew he, he always had trouble walking. Mm, so, okay. You mean from Tangling, he piggybacked you? No, from, <laughs> from the void deck. Oh, <laughs> from the void deck downstairs, he piggy be, piggy back me upstairs lah. It's near then, the market actually, kan Kina? You had uh, that fall near the market um at the main road around there, right? Yeah, correct at SO area. So it's like um you know along West Coast Road, at at where Tangling Secondary School was. So he took the responsibility. He cured me. He healed me. I was like. Okay, I saw him applying this. Um, he he blended uh dried leaves. This leaf is called. He said, uh, okay, remember this. Okay, Kina, this is uh daun kancing baju. I don't know what's the scientific uh term for it lah, but it it does help me tremendous. I mean, it it healed me. It 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 worked magically lah. Basically, the the powder that. Uh, I that he sprinkled on my uh, wound. Basically, uh, it acts as the skin. It covers the blood and it dried up the blood and then no infection. And then he, you know, I could see the flesh and all the new cells and it start it started to bleed again. And then I told my dad, I said, Papa, Dara, Papa. Oh, it shows that your your wound is getting better. Uh, usually, that is the stages of uh, getting you know getting well uh, from any kind of wound for your recovery. So I said, oh, okay. It then how long it took you to recover? About um two months. Two months because uh, and then I was on crutches also because um yeah basically I got a fractured uh shin bone lah. Because I went to the doctor to check also, so that I could produce the MC. I was, um, I was sitting for my O level at that time. Then, lucky enough, my teachers they were all very supportive, and then they sent me homework to home. I could do my revision at home, so I was like treated special lah at that year. Very very special. <laughs> nice. And then, um, and then the best part, you know, I, I felt bored because. I felt two months was like, you know, uh, like, okay, it took me one month. Uh, I mean, I was confined at home for the period of one month. And then I told uh, I told my dad, I said, Papa, boring lah, Papa. Tak boleh pergi mana And then I was like getting skinnier and skinnier at home because I could just see it and then I have to bear the pain. And then he asked me, okay, kau nak pergi mana? Like, okay, where you want to go? Then I said, Papa, nak pergi Labrador Park lah. I don't know. I just want to go and feel some breeze, look at some greeneries. And then he, re he really took me in his Toyota car, his antique car. Um, he brought me to Labr Labrador Park. And then, and then we, he, he told me, okay, now we are here. We are here. Um, he piggybacked me again. I said, Bapa, the sakit apa? Uh, the, the, macam apa, the term in Malay we said uh, bisa was like painful lah. Then he said, okay, duduk sini, mari bapa encang kau. Come, I, I piggyback you. Huh, again? Okay lah, I took the chance lah because I'm heavy and then I knew he could do it, right? So, might as well. 
piggyback me and then I could hear he said um uh, Allahu Akbar or Bismillah like as if like he asked for a little prayer like um as um God to give him the strength to carry me because I was heavy so so like you know like it it teach me like whatever thing that you want to do the impossible thing you can still do with the short verse of in the name of Allah you can do it so not only that when he piggyback me he's he jump you know he it, we went uphill like the slope the road in Labrador Park was not like flat it, it has to go uphill a little bit so I was impressed and then okay then okay then we reached the car park and then we headed back home lah. So, remember the the leaf was daun kancing baju. Daun kancing baju was um he said it's quite uh difficult to grow. It needs the right amount of water and sunlight. So whoever have some garden space, please go and grow daun kancing baju. I don't know what's the English term. Yeah, let's go and find out later what's the English term. But you know, uh, yeah. but you know, I I Kakina, I remember that. Uh, I was quite young but I recall your wound was very very big and it was pretty deep and I was actually very impressed that I see you every single day in Mark's room on the bed laying down and uh, our father actually has a timing to put your the, the medicine on, on top of you you know the herbs and everything and I recall there was one time where he asked me to help me to put but I really cannot because I was very girly so I really <laughs> applaud Father, for, you know, I think it's something that's not easy, especially, but I think for the love of his daughter, it's really, mashallah, actually, your story about uh, father piggybagging you, it really brought me to tears, actually. Thank you so much, Sakina, for, for this sharing. Okay, uh, I would like to also hear probably from one of his siblings. Is there anything in particular that you guys would like to share? Maybe the mom ke, sakit baran ke, urut ke, ah, kelakam, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, when I was 10 years old, I, you know, when I was 10 years old, I think he was probably just 21 years old and I uh, actually fractured my arm, uh, fractured mm -hmm. my arm, I uh, fell down in school and um, the um, family decided uh, not to take me to the hospital because our Bapa, uh, no, uh, he wanted to do, treat my fracture at home. So, I, you know, he had me, you know, he had the bandage and he applied the, the param, you know, uh, the mixture of rice with um, uh, chunky. Chunky and uh, serai and yeah. yeah all the in the in the proper uh, uh, proportions you know yeah. and then uh, uh, wrap it around and then bandage it you know so uh, you know it was like to me it was wow amazing he's only 21 years old and he was already able to treat a fracture you know uh, injury uh, I didn't go to hospital at all. I, I, I recovered at home. Wow, I think that's amazing. Mashallah. Nadia, I want to add one thing. What is it, Dasima? I want to add one thing. Um, after Uncle Akram's, uh, uh, how he relate the story of him having a fracture. I had a fractured one, a uh, fractured, um, it was a hairline fracture on my uh, ankle. So, uh, the I, I cannot forget that incident. Zero point. It was very painful and I thought I was going to die that painful. And um, he uh, immediately when he saw me on the floor crying, Ghazali was with me. He was laughing at me actually when I had that immense pain. He was laughing and he thought I was joking. So I was on the floor crying and wailing. So um, mom and dad, uh, they were having breakfast then. I remember he ran out of the kitchen and he came to me and I was, I was screaming and crying at the same time, but I was doing, I was uh, reciting zikir and he was surprised. He said, oh, bagus, bagus. you know, good, good. Continue your zikir, continue your zikir. So I was reciting my zikir, Allah Akbar, and all the zikir that we've been doing together, you know, with him recite while with reciting with him so I thought it was the only way to save me because I really thought I was going to die that it was so painful and he immediately saw the swell on my ankle and 
he he told mom i i heard he told mom it's a it's a fracture or a broken bone i'm not so sure but be careful with the ankle so he lifted it he lifted me up i was 11 so he lifted me up and carried me to the bed i was like how is this pain going to end the pain is like level 100 to me then i i I, I was hoping that he could do something quickly to, to end that pain, but it was, it was difficult for me to uh, understand the, the whole situation. Then I was continuously crying. That's all I could do. So mom was, of course, she freaked out. She cried. She was panicking. She asked um, dad, what can I do? What can we do? What should we do? So he lifted me up and put me on the bed and, from then on, I forgot. I, I cannot remember what else happened, you know. But he treated me. He healed me. Uh, healed my ankle. He treated me for two months straight. Mom was there helping me in the daytime. But our Bapa was, was um, treating me, especially during the night when I couldn't sleep. He would sleep next to me. Mom had to sacrifice and she's sleeping elsewhere with the siblings with the rest of the siblings. So I remembered and two months, everybody was asking me, thank goodness it was school holiday then, November school holiday and I didn't have to go to school, but I was worried because come January, I had to come to, I had to attend, you know, I have to go to school, right? So he treated me, uh, one month passed, he bought me clutches. He trained me how to walk with the clutches. He said, no, no need to go to the doctor, Papa can heal you. No, don't, yeah. don't worry. Actually, actually, I want to say something on this one here also, Sima. Yeah, go ahead, um, Ma. Yeah, because um, I actually wanted to tell him, um, shall we just bring Sima to, you know, to check further? Because I think definitely there's a hairline, uh, it's a fracture lung. <clears throat> because you was always crying and then the swollen on your feet was quite intense tau. Yeah. So um but knowing Bapa, late father, mm. due to respect, I just um don't want to um lose the experience of doing his traditional healing with mm. the children. So um I just leave it to him. I just leave it to him and I just give him the encouragement to do whatever um, the traditional healing part because I know he need this for his for his future for his mm -hmm. for his future because mm -hmm. if I stop him and tell him to just go to doctor then mm -hmm. that's it there's no um, satisfaction on his side as the traditional healer can. Then, uh, you you remember when Sima was a baby? Ah. Yang kukunat angin. Yes. You two, uh, that time, he was really <laughs> panicked lah. Kali Sima yeah. kata, you thought you were, you, you were, you think it, you thought you were going, going to, to die. die. Right? Yeah. But at that time, that time when you were baby, really your father thought you were going to die, you know. Not responding, the perut dah bloated. You know? Yeah. Sampai Aura Makja kata, tak tahu apa ayat aja aku nak baca. Semua dah baca dah. You know? But yeah, Alhamdulillah, yeah. when, you know, they uru 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 uru, suddenly then you dah respond, you know, dah start to breathe in. It's a angin, chika, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, that one is a very bad bloated, you know. Yes, yes, every yes, time, yes. every time when it comes uh, during uh, Maghrib, during Maghrib, that is a time that I am so worried also. I'm very frightened that you, might, you, you are going to have this kind of bloatedness to your stomach and then you will be suffering. You cannot walk. You mm. cannot sit properly and you will be just leaning like that. And mm. you know, as a mother looking at my daughter like that, I'm so uh, very sad lah to see you. But there was one day when Bapa really treated you in this room, in his room. Mm. And you, uh, he was treat, treat, uh, treating you with um, oil and some uh, mixture of few few oils with kerosene or mud, you know. And then when Bapa applied, when Dad applied to your stomach, I can hear the, uh, the longest fat that you produce. <laughs> and yeah. You can oh, so, so much. The melody, right? 
Actually, I was still so uh, like what baby I was still very small. You can put so much, you know, and Papa was pressing your stomach, pressing your yeah. stomach, and suddenly it was just like, ah, uh, you see this. Papa will say this is the angin that is coming out. Yeah. Really, Allah Ta'ala, really answer your prayer. I can still remember the discomfort. I remembered how I couldn't breathe. I remembered how when it comes uh, dusk, you know, my grip time, I remembered I can, I already feel so stuffy. So uh, with Arwa Bapa, healing is so powerful. Um, his healing touch is so powerful. One thing is because not only of, I remembered it, I, I can feel it's not only love, it's also his faith, he believed so strongly, so uh, passionately, and the belief in the will of Allah, Allah Ta'ala, he believed so much that he could heal, and he was given this, the, 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 the power to heal, to, you know, he's like the vehicle where Allah just grant him that power to help heal, and he, he it's, it's, uh, it's incredible how I, if I were to, if that I survived that moment when Arwa thought I was going to die. And I think that was not one, that was not the only time um, I was told that my, my, my life was hanging. There's few other times which I don't want to get into it, but back to the fractured ankle, he um, he really our, our papa really took care of me. He went, we went, we, I had to go to school in January. He would he would drive me to school. He drove to school. He made sure he met all my school friends, my classmates. He knew who they were. They, he told them one by one. Uh, uh, korang ni semua, you all jaga Dasima, okay? Jaga Dasima, Pakci is here. But in classroom, you jaga Dasima, okay? You make sure she can climb the stairs. She's with clutches, but make sure make sure she can climb the stairs, come go down the stairs, uh, uh, hold her hands. But uh, if anything goes wrong, Pakci is in the canteen, okay? You just call me. So uh, for one month straight, I was with clutches in school, and uh, Alhamdulillah, it healed. Not totally, I was still limping, but it healed. So it's um Bapak for your hands. And Kina, I got the piggyback right also <laughs> from, from the under the block, uh, right up uh, two staircase up and to to our home. So few times, not only once, few few nights he had to piggyback me up. Uh, now, uh, now how you feel with your um, Alhamdulillah, I can run, I can skip, I can jump, I played netball. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Maybe I want to add something. Uh, you know, when he was young, when he was just uh, maybe, I uh, forget difference I still don't know actually. Okay, you know, kampung, our kampung, when people had problems, uh, especially macam problem macam kena sampo and this sort of things kan, kena racau and all that, and you know. He will go. He will go, and he will be the front person there. Eh? Untuk depan orang tu, and dia yang nak keluarkan hatu setan tu depan orang. <laughs> and he was still a young guy, you know. He was still so young. In the 20s. Yeah, yeah, hardly in the twenties, but he already had this um, ability and the confidence in himself that he can do it. And he's so brani, you know. Which uh, you know, we all of course so proud of him lah, kan? Kita semua kat belakang untuk kecil kecil mah just follow and see how we can handle all this. And then he will tell the stories lah, or the setan yang masuk ni jin lah, gini whatever. Though. So we all hear the stories of the setan and jin and, and the malang and all that all since we were very very young because he would actually be involved in all in all these things and people around the village would actually trust him enough also to let him handle a lot of these types of things and you know uh, i think many of the times he 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 managed to you know to, to get the person to keluarkan whatever that was in the body lah. and then for me personally as, a, as, a, as far as sakit kan you know my whole life story is uh, my back injury and so he was my doctor lah. in fact when he passed i was that's the thing that i told myself alamak my doctor is gone you know because you know i don't take any any other types of um, I don't I don't believe in you know the allopathy I don't believe in in surgeries and all that and that is also from him basically and eh? like Rashid was saying just now what we are today because our age difference is quite big eh, with our very big uh, age difference and when our father passed um, 
he basically took the role actually of like a, of a father also to us and he shaped our thinking and our minds you know like so so like actually for me also you know the, like the purity of the body how you need to make your body pure how you need to keep your body pure until today you know how i am a fanatic about that it's from him it's from him you know he don't want to use sabon he don't want to use this he don't want to use that no he will use lemon like he will use all kinds of anything that's natural right he's like that right so and i i became like that you know i became i became so um you know so strict about these things actually because i realized that this is real this is true what he was saying is true and all those things he was telling us about all the impurities in in all the um, things that we are eating and the things that we're putting on our body it's all true now everything is true now and he was telling us we, I was probably barely what, maybe 11, 12, 13 years old. He was telling all these stories about what they put in medicines, or what they put in food products, what they put in uh, skincare products, what they put in uh, you know, vaccinations, all kinds of things. All those things now are true. So he was wise beyond his time. Yes. So wise. And he was reading all kinds of books also. And I learned to read books also from him. Because before that, we were not reading. We were probably just reading novels and all that. But he had books, you know, he had real books. He had buku-buku perubatan. He had buku-buku entrepreneurship. Like entrepreneurship also, you know, I learned from him. But the perubatan, he even, uh, he even uh, interact. He interact with us also. Macam, so just uh, picking also the mind, you know, picking the mind. Like, okay, what, what else can we do? And why is this good? And why is that good? So he trained us, you know, he trained us. Um, to uh, to understand and to appreciate and, and, and it's very impactful because it's that's how we you know stay healthy today actually because of his knowledge and his teaching actually Mashallah, I have to very much agree with you, Auntie Sherry, because uh, until today, Alhamdulillah, even with my kids when they have fever, uh, you know, we don't deny uh, medicinal uh, approach. Uh, modern approach entirely but the first priority is of course you know we go back to the basics ginger uh, what do you call that kunyit you know um, garlic I even chop for the kids garlic and I mix it with a bit of honey but if they don't want to do it I do it in a form of a sweet so I will really pound the garlic mix it with honey and then I bake it so it becomes like a gula gula for them so it's like a it's really a blessing whatever that uh, our raw father has really taught us and I think all of us have really uh, applied accordingly. Uh, I would like to touch on one question from the public. He actually asked, uh, and I think this one probably anyone can answer if you feel that you know where it is coming from. Uh, the question is, how did he develop this passion for herbology? Uh, for me personally, I feel it all also started off with when uh, our raw father had a terrible uh, accident, you know, I think mom, you can uh, maybe share a little bit more about this and then how he developed his passion and love for herbology. Yeah, I think mom will know best about this. I think it's from Orang Batak, right mom? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, his passion for traditional is beyond, uh, beyond is so, so far, so far. Um, cannot deny that. Um, I think it's a natural instinct, lah, dai. Because it didn't uh, start with just with doing the accident. It, it started since he uh, was. Uh, it started from many many areas, you know. It started from he being a master of silat. You know, when you are master of silat, you must know the talent on how to heal your student. Because if your student got injured, your student got um. Uh, hit by a craze, you cannot send the student to a hospital. So that's where um, the master have to have proper recitation and um, uh, like, macam, they must know what is good for the, 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 the treatment for the person. Sometimes it happens like spontaneously, like let's say if the, there's blood coming up from the finger, he will say a simple doa, he will read, recite a simple doa, and then the blood will just not flow out anymore. Oh, he has so many ointments. Uh, and yeah. I will run away from him if I've got a uh, bruise <laughs> or sprain during silat. 
because he want to massage and he's got very strong fingers uh. i know i will run away from him i don't want i want <laughs> I to think, be massaged i think he saw the magic the magic during his martial art uh, time the magic from the from his own master right like the blood can stop immediately it happened to my son uh, when he was 11 years old he fell in the toilet he broke the toilet bowl and he had a very deep cut above his knee yeah above the kneecap it was so big it was a lot of blood uh, gushing out i quickly asked my wife to call uh, my late brother luckily he lived nearby and then he came in in less than five minutes he put his hand on the wound recite a simple uh, mantra just within one two minutes the, the blood totally stopped so it was magical he was gifted with magic hands and his hand was like a painkiller you know so we didn't i didn't send my son to clinic or hospital and uh, no, no need to to sue to you see and my son was stopped crying immediately when he recited the the mantra because he learned this from his master he saw the magic so he had uh, his belief level was so huge in this uh, mystical healing. See, from there, then he studied more on mystical healing and studied uh, from uh, aborigines in Trangano about herbs for four months. And then he imparted his skill uh, to us that uh, we, 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 we went along with him into the forest looking for herbs. So he saw all this uh, magic to most of us, to, to normal people, that we, we will never see this sort of thing. But it happened to him. So I, I, I always think of him as a person with magical hands, a gifted hand. So everything he touches, the pain will, will stop immediately. You see? So no need painkiller, no need to go to hospital, no need to go to clinic. So it gradually developed during his martial art world. And one thing I would like to um, add on also, in his younger days in martial art, he was also a, a big fan of, of the late Bruce Lee. <laughs> So in his room, he had a lot of uh, magazines uh, about uh, Bruce Lee's uh, lifestyle, the exercise uh, routine, and he always teach us to do the same e exercises, you know. So he was, uh, even though he was 17 years old at that time, I was only 12, he brought me to learn martial art uh, from a guru in an isolated uh, place in, in Chua Chukang. So in the earlier days, we had learned so much about mystical healing, about martial art you know so among hundreds of students he was appointed to be the right hand man of the instructor and eventually he became the master the master appointed him to to become the master in martial art and at the same time he studied taekwondo also you see so he got he was a fan of bruce lee he would have his nunchaku he taught us how to use the nunchaku you know so he he was uh, so enthusiastic about the uh, martial art about healing about the herbs about uh mystical healing you know and he told me that he said if you understand the spirit of the blood you can command the blood to stop i mean this kind of thing you wouldn't, wouldn't hear from normal people right well, what is what is uh, the spirit of blood but he knew so he learned this not from one master but many masters he learned so he he, he, he was very confident that any wound the blood can stop immediately so it happened it happened and then and, and most of us like my side, I've never been to clinic for the past, what, 20, 30 years? None of us. Yeah. None of us. None yeah, none of us. We because never go to doctors. Everything oh, we sorry. never go to hospitals. <laughs> everything we um, Yeah, I also, I, want, I would like to say something. I truly believe, so on to the question just now, when did the late Dean decided to dwell in herbology? I truly believe uh, it's not, late father who seeks out herbology is the herb who seeks him that's what i believe naturally um i mean this miracle i feel it does it happens like once in a lifetime where we see like real real magic that god want to let his people witness so we witness it a lot through him there was one time i hurt my knee really bad and then I told Bapak, Pak, urutkan Pak sikit. Uh, okay, okay, no. Okay, you close your eyes. Okay, you hold. And then he told me, you close your eyes. Okay, you you put your palm on your knee. And then I was looking at him. I was peeping at him. He was closing his eyes also. Okay, I, you just feel where you want your hands to go. So, example, this is my knee, right? So, I was doing this. And then suddenly, 
I I receive this uh, mysterious wisdom of where I want to put my hands to where the point of the pain is. And I was looking at him. He was closing his hand and he was touching his own knee. You get what I'm trying to say? He was controlling me from a distance. I was seated at the chair. He was seated at the sofa. And then I was like, hey, Papa, knee, knee. No, 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 no. Close your eyes. Focus. Then I was focusing. And then it hit the right, the point. Then I was pressing on the point. Okay, that's the point I hold. Okay, you recite this and then you hold. Oh, then I was shouting because the pain was so immense. Then after five seconds, the pain on the knee was gone. Then I was like, Papa, what was that? Okay, what you just learned is for you to use until you die. So now you know if people got pain in the knee, you know what, what to do. So Alhamdulillah, I managed to do that to many other people I managed to help. So that's the magic that I also want to share with you. Can I, can I add on something here? Yes, please. Uh, okay, uh, back in 2005, I had dengue hemorrhage fever. And I was throwing out like crazy, vomiting and stop. So he and Kapila immediately rushed to my house and, and he said, Alim, uh, Abang got a treatment or a cure for you. So he said, uh, get a white sugar, fry the sugar until it becomes caramel. And then drink it because because once you have got either diarrhea or or you're throwing out or you're vomiting, your large intestines they expand. So by drinking caramel, you will shrink back and your diarrhea and your vomiting stops. So I did that. To, you know, Kamida was in the kitchen reading me the, the white sugar. She was frying the white sugar for me, and then immediately I drank. Within ten minutes, the vomiting stopped altogether. You know, this was how good it was. And I also remember he told me that whenever I enter a forest, the forest is like a pharmacy to me. He knew by sight and by use hundreds of herbs. This was how remarkable he was, how knowledgeable he was. And the other incident which I remember was uh, he told me he was doing sculpturing. In, I cannot remember where he was in a hotel in, in Orchard Road or something. And there was a glass sculptor. And the glass sculptor actually cut his hand, his arm actually, and it was a cut from here, long cut, he said. And uh, I walked, went to him and said, hey, It's okay, it's okay, you don't have to call the ambulance, I'll stop the bleeding. And he recited this mantra, and he had, you know, he closed up like that, and remarkably the bleeding stopped. You know, so, like, like what uh, Abang Sadek is saying, he had magical hands. He knew the magic of it, and that is where he himself and he had so many people. You know, it was totally different. Uh, I think we are losing Uncle a little bit due to the connection. <laughs> Apologize. Uh, can I just come in here? Uh, okay. Nadia? Yes, of course. I'm struggling to listen to Alim from just now because uh, there's a lot of disturbance. I hope I'm coming out uh, across clearly. Yes, yeah? you are. Okay. Um, I just remembered as a little girl, uh, I'm thinking to myself, how does he know so much? How does he know so much? I don't get it. I look at the books on the shelf, you know, in his room and so on. So many books, right? But then I was thinking to myself, where does he have the time to read these books? Because he's... You know, he's so, his life is so multifaceted. He's doing so many things, you know, every day with so many different, he's being pulled in so many different directions because he's so multi-talented. When does he read? But otherwise, how does he have all this wealth of information all the time? Every time we're sitting, you know, with him, we are, you know, of course, he's also a very funny man. So, you know, we like being around him, but just the, words of wisdom every time that's coming out of his mouth and the knowledge and the scientific information that he backed it up with and so on is just so amazing and I'm still I you know I'm, I've always find myself thinking you know like so it's nothing other than you know God's gift to him you know the, the blessings to him but also just just very quickly just uh, going into the point that uh, Auntie Sherry mentioned just now uh, again as you know as, as a little girl 
um, in the kampong, every time when someone is possessed in the kampong, he would be the go-to person, right? And outside of our family, I don't know who here has a real experience with someone who is possessed, like in the, you know, watching the person, because otherwise you would think that the person is putting on a show, right? You would think that, oh, uh, you know, this person is just pretending. But when you're there, you can really know and tell that this is, you know, the real deal. This the evil, evil is actually here. This is evil, you know, the work of evil, you know? And I'm always so, um, you know, in awe or amazed at, as to how he always have this faith and belief that he is stronger than evil. He is way more powerful than evil. You know, that he can overcome evil in that sense, right? So, you know, when you're looking at that, the forces of evil and how scary that is, you know, like everybody's cowering in the corner and so on and just looking at all these things happening. And it's there, like Jerry said, you know, really at the front of it and looking at how whatever mantra and prayers and doa and, uh, you know, whatever skills is pulling to really push this evil away and out and so on. And that is something that I really admire today. I think some of our brothers and also maybe your brothers, uh, you know, my siblings, your siblings, the, the men, they probably have developed this sense of it also to, to really understand that God has made us above uh, the powers of evil, that we can, we can actually overcome that. And I think for many of us, it is still a, a, a journey. We still have a long way to go to learn, to understand that, you know, with the verses of the powerful, you know, holy words and so on, that we too can probably, you know, uh, uh, get a little bit better as far as that is concerned and not feel powerless or helpless when it happens, you know, in, in front of our own eyes. Yeah, I just want to share a little bit, uh, Auntie Sarah. Uh, before we, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, mom, uh, I'm just going to go to you soon after because we have one question before we close this uh, particular question. Uh, so the question is, uh, I would like to hear, is there any special client who visited Muhammad Din's house to treat, uh, to be treated using the artwork in his home? Would like to hear how he went about it. So maybe mother being the one who's always by his side at at home, maybe you can share the amount of customers he always have, the queues outside our house. I always remember I get so annoyed when I can't watch my television because people are sitting outside queuing and we have to go off somewhere. <laughs> we have to wait in the kitchen. So maybe mom, you want to share a little bit about that? Okay, I'll share about this later, but uh, just a quick one. I um, was talking about um, the recovery of, uh, you know, when our Bapa uh, had his accident, his motorbike accident, um, he thought after one year or two years, he thought he was recovered. He thought he could walk and run better. But me, um, being his wife, um, I know the, the, the sufferings that he's going through. Because every time when he's limping and when he's in pain, he will just sit in a corner and he will say, and he will just tell me, he will speak in Malay and say, um, I think there's something in my wound. Actually, the, the leg is already healed already. You know, it's already covered. It's already after one or two years of uh, recovery from the accident that he can walk, but it's not really fully recover, recovered. So he felt that something that's, like all the particles of sand, uh, debris from the accident. And you know what? He will tell me, Da, can you please go to the kitchen and take me a sharp tweezer or razor? I said, apa bang? why? I want to cut because I feel that, you know, the, the, the skin, the, 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 the feet, the ankle, he felt that there's something like, sand or stone that he said that he wants to take it out. He will ask me to pound clove. Chengke. Ask me to pound clove. And then when I think a uh, clove will act as a, uh, apa tu? As apa ya, Sadek? Eh? Uh, the numb, to make it numb, right? Uh, to make it numb. Oh. 
So um, I will just do as what he say. Then I, change, I, I found the cloth and he will take the cloth and he will apply it on his feet. After applying from his feet, he will, take, he will use his saliva, his saliva and then he just add to the cloth and then he just apply to the feet. And then you know what happened? He will just cut the, his leg and he will press it out. And actually there is the sand particles that have not come out from the recovery. It's inside. So that's why sometimes it's very painful for him to walk and limping. And uh, he felt that there is like a uh, white what got passed and then he have to cut. And looking at that, sometimes I say, okay, how you do like I give you the, the things near you, you do you do yourself because I cannot see. I, I don't I, I I'm not I quite scary to see actually. But he is being uh is such a strong man inside, you know. From the ex accident that he experienced, that really treated him till his last day. So, do you think that actually, Mom, uh, encouraged him and even inspired him and motivated him even deeper and further to help heal the people around him that he don't even know, he has no connection with, no family ties with. So, you know, maybe you can share a little bit about how he really come together to really help um, people that he don't even know. Strangers come to the house, queuing up, up until the corridor. <laughs> um, I think this is, you know, these people will just come from word of mouth. When people have already been uh, healed by him through massage, let's say he has... Um, uh, uh, back ache, you know, like uh, that in his bachelor days, uh, Nadia. He already mm -hmm. started that in his bachelor days. Not, uh, not. He didn't start when he had his accident. It's yeah, in the village, in the our kampung, the kampung days. A lot of people will queue up uh, mm -hmm. outside our house, taking turn to be to be to be healed by him. Even before you were born. Yeah, even before you were born. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember one time my son, five years old, uh, Muhammad. Mama brought home uh, and showed me his tooth, Gigi, his tooth. He said, what was this? My father did not pull out my tooth using a plier. <laughs> so my son a didn't have to go to a friend. dentist. Just visited my late brother. <laughs> he can pull out. <laughs> <laughs> no painkiller, nothing. So he was magic. <laughs> Actually, I also want to mention that aside from all his healing powers and, and so on, uh, one thing that people fail to remember, he was also a chick magnet in the kampung. He was a oh, chick magnet. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, he I was such a, he was such an, uh, uh, he had this attraction to him that every auntie in the kampung wants to make him the, their son-in-law. <laughs> because of his dimple. No, he's yeah. so multi-talented. He's like leader of the pack. Oh, you yeah. know, he has friends all around him. He still, no matter how busy he is, he still will have time with the hanging out with the guys, right? So we grew up knowing all of his male friends, all of his guys, uh, guy friends. And they will all come to our house, kampung house to hang out. They hang out, not in the house, lah, because kampung house, we got veranda outside, right? So everyone will be hanging out outside and it's like an open house. They will come and makan and chit chat, and our parents are cool about that. You know, it's like okay, whatever in the kitchen. You know, you guys just go ahead, help yourself. My parents are uh, very nice in that sense. So we grew up um, seeing him surrounded with people. Everybody wants to be close to him. Everybody is like feels so proud to be with him. No. Now you imagine, imagine he's a healer, and he's an artist, he can paint very well, and he sings so well, and he looks so good. Mm. I brought uh, hair. All, kampo, all <laughs> the girls, um, yeah. all everybody want to be with him. Not just in our kampung, the girls from other kampung also come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they all and come. They are outside his room. They were, they were also from white girls. And then they were yeah, white girls mother, too. Correct. What about my mother and all that, all trying to get to know him. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to penetrate lah into the inner circle. <laughs> the first time I saw a white lady uh, came to our kampung and all the kampung children following the two white ladies everywhere, you know. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, Arwan ini, Pak Ayah did just that. She she uh, she identify arwah bapa dekat rumah dalam butcher, uh, and that was what she did. She lure arwah bapa back to the house <laughs> and then introduce her introduce him to Ma. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I didn't oh. think that Arab Papa was a Malay. He looks like more like a <laughs> dark, uh, uh, like, like a, a kiwi, like a kiwi. Yeah. yeah. And, and funny thing, he speaks to my mom in English. My mom, my mom, my mom speaks to uh, Arwa in English. So <laughs> my mother, Kaka, can he speak? She speaks English with Arani uh, Abanga. So she was saying, uh, "What's your name?" <laughs> you remember the, the the of course you all remember because Hamida was acting in that also the first TV series he acted uh, uh, in the title. Our yeah. Bangu. What the, the series? Jejak Kembara. Jejak Kembara, right? So Jack every Kembara. time, every time Jejak Kembara, it will show like seven forty-five or something or seven forty-five p.m. So by seven thirty, in the kampung will be quiet already. Everybody's gone home. Showered, whatever, waiting in front of the TV to wait for his, uh, you know, to wait for Rama. his people to, to come on. But also, what what I recall very quickly also is that whenever there is um, his finish the filming, the entire crew, you know, the director, the producer, and all the extras, whatever, would actually come and park themselves at our house and enjoy our mother's cooking. You remember that? That's why we all know everybody that's around him. And then the interesting thing about the Jack Kambara was that so many of the actors and all that were from our budak kampung. <laughs> he roped in all the lorong lompang uh, boys and all that to become all uh, part timers. Uh, uh, in the fight scenes, in the fight scenes, they were all the silat boys and the kampung boys. Yeah. So everybody wants to watch actually because there's so many of them with actually inside that. that Jack Kambara, I think, was the first. Uh, Malay drama, it was uh, in eight series, yeah. you know, eight series, and it was uh, uh, the first uh, in color before, before it was first in white. Whether, whether we can find that film again or not, eh? That Jejak hey, Sadek, 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 cerita lah, cempreng, cempreng. And his name was Abang Satria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, uh, uh, Brunei um, media bought, uh, bought over the film, the drama Jejak oh. Kembara. Oh. It, it's Brunei now. Dek, dek. Huh? Dek. Huh? Cempreng ni cerita mana? Cempreng. Cempreng. Ah, and then he can also, uh, in healing, he can also, people come to him with all sorts of uh, problems and uh, domestic issues like like teenagers that run away from home. So the parents would come to my late brother and, uh, and ask for help. He only requested them for a photo. And we, we recited mantra. So within just a short few days, the person will come back, will come back to the family. So he has the ability also to command people to come back home, people who ran away from home. See? So there are, there are many uh, spiritual healings uh, during his, uh, his, uh, his healing period. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And in the village, he was well known as an expert, uh, as a martial art exponent. And he brought the, our silat in all of Singapore to become champion amongst all other martial art group so he lead the team to took the championship and he was appointed as the national uh, national uh, national uh, instructor in singapore because he was the first martial art exponent in an open uh, contact sparring to have beaten the indonesian champion so the whole of uh, singapore uh, sea Lab federation appointed him to become the national instructor and under his wings he, he produced many uh, good martial artists during his time mm. he was uh, really talented he was really talented mashallah that's that's really true uh, thank you so much everyone for sharing uh, you know because uh, i feel that there's a lot of things that i'm actually learning even right now as as we're speaking and i'm very grateful and thank you everybody for for opening up um, so you know, as we we all know that uh, our father was, you know, he he was a painter. He was a traditional healer. Uh, he's a, an adventurous father, adventurous brother, adventurous uncle to all of us. Uh, I think we cannot also forget that he's also someone very um, 
he loves music you know he he loves to sing so as we know he also composed and he produces he writes uh, songs that was also currently right now as we're speaking they actually showcased it in the National Gallery of Singapore mm -hmm. so I think before we you know finish a little bit with the song I, I just want to ask you know casually if there's one thing that would uh, remind you uh, that if there's one song that will bring you back to memory with uh, our father what song would it be and why yeah for me it would be the time when he was uh, playing it uh, at the nightclub during Nafa time, so he had to have uh, some money to pay for his uh, school fees. So he's uh, playing at the Wisma, now it's Wisma Altria. That mm -hmm. was an uh, era of rock, Led Zeppelin time, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, uh, Grand Fang. So one of the, his favorite songs would be uh, Soldier of Fortune by Deep Purple. Let me sing it for you. <laughs> I have often told you stories about the way I live the life of a drifter waiting for the day when I take your hand and sing your songs and maybe would say come live with me and love me and I would surely stay dang, dang, dang. But I feel I'm growing older Everybody And the songs <laughs> that I had sung Echo in the distance Like the sound of the windmill going round I guess I'd always be a soldier of fortune yeah, there, you go. there are many other songs, uh, TV <coughs> songs, rock songs, yeah. Yeah, I got one story, song. yeah. Soft when he started, song. just started uh, strumming the guitar, right? So at that time, he has a lot of chores to do because we have cows, <coughs> goats, chickens. He you know, has to take care of the cows, give them grasses and all. So I think, um, and then my, uh, I think one day he did not do his chores and he strummed the guitar. And then my late father came, took the guitar from him, and smashed it. Broke. Everything break. But then after a while, he came back <laughs> worse with a drum set <laughs> and put it in the living room. A drum, drum set. set and a trumpet. <laughs> oh, wow. Then, what a rebel. But then my father, <laughs> my father cool off. My father sat at the drum set. My late father sat at the drum set. My father started beating the drum also. <laughs> yeah, he had to take care of the cattle. Yeah, we had uh, many cattle. Yeah, so he had uh, every day got to uh, cut grass and bring back to feed the cattle. Yeah, I was in charge of the goats. He had chores to do. Yeah, he uh, yeah, and then he had to uh, what do you call uh, milk the cows also. Yeah, I milk the cows. Yeah, I really had to milk the cows though because uh, my father used to sell the milk uh, to, to people in the village. Yeah. Wow. The song that wow. I like him to sing always with his guitar wow. is Barambus Angin Balang. Rory. Rory? I always, think, I always think that, you know, and of course the other one, uh, the one that Rashid mentioned just now earlier, um, maybe it's a day, right? Give a rendition of the maybe it's a day. Uh, Rashi can sing a poem in Mimpis the Day. Okay. Ah, he's on mute. Yeah, one of his favorite songs yeah, was uh, Mimpis the Day by uh, Brory. Brory. Yeah. Marantika. Come, Uncle Rashid. Angin Mala. Hey, Mimpis the Day. Mimpis the Day. Di Malam Sepi. Di Malam Sepi. Di Malam Sepi. You would always sing those both. Di Malam Sepi. Aku bermimpi. Mimpi yang sedih sekali, kau akan pergi, tinggalkan diriku. Aku menangis terseduh di diriku tak pernah. Lepas dari penderita, impian ini terjadi. 
Kau pergi setelah aku serahkan kasih suci. Itulah nasib milikku. C major, eh? C major, make quite, make quite. Right, right, right. Wow, thank you so much, Uncle Rashid. I'm actually uh, impressed by your uh, by your voice, but I'm also more impressed by the ones that on your finger. Where is that, ah? Banana. Grape. Banana. Pisang. Okay, okay. Masha Allah. Alhamdulillah. I think we all would. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for your contribution, and I think we'd like to hear a little bit of uh, our father's song. And I think this is something that is not a stranger to us all. Uh, mm. We all know the song that our father wrote and produced, and even some of his siblings, I believe, uh, wrote together with him for some of the songs. Uh, but at the moment now, I think we would love to hear from our uh, beloved brother, my beloved brother, uh, Habri M Din. Who will be performing for us? Che che che. Don't be nervous. Huh? It's okay. No 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 judgment. No, <laughs> no, so we'll be hearing I, from Habri. Don't worry. I, don't worry. I will harmonize with you. So we'll be hearing from Habri a song titled called uh, "Renungkan La." It's not Habri. Ah, how come so big? <laughs> okay. Assalamualaikum. Okay, I'm just testing the Habri small to see whether you guys can hear clearly or not first. So I've got my guitar here. Okay. Can you guys hear the guitar? Can. Can. Okay. Okay. Can.
insyaallah thank you so much habri that's uh, indeed a very beautiful uh, yeah. you have a very beautiful voice masyaallah not surprised where it came from probably papa <laughs> okay so um thank you so much everybody for joining with us on this uh, very uh, emotional sharing uh, something and reaching for for those who have not you know get to know uh, the late dean i really hope that through this uh, zoom you guys have managed to you know know about him deeper and to everyone else uh, auntie begum everyone everyone from across the border you know thank you so much for taking your time today or oh, uncle alim are you okay <laughs> everyone else today for coming together to share and me Roh Ara Father Muhammad bin Muhammad be blessed and inshallah he will continue to be protected. Uh, with that, before we end with this segment today, I also would like to extend to my uncle, Uncle Sadiq, who would like to give a little bit of a short prayer before we close this session. So, Uncle Sadiq, take it away, please. Yeah, inshallah, may uh, our late brother be blessed and be in uh, Jannah in heaven amongst all those uh, blessed souls and uh, every one of us all uh, protected by the almighty Allah. Amen. Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ahlul Qubur Muhammad bin Rahma Minal muslimin awal muslimat wal mu'minin awal mu'minat kulum ajma'in Sya'un lillahi lahumul al-fatihah A'udzubillahi minal shaytani rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Al-Rahmanir Rahim Al-Jamidin Iyya kena ahli Iyya kena astain Idina sirat al-mustaqin Sirat al-lazina anamta alayhim Ghayr maudubi alayhim Waladhan Amin 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 Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala sayyidina Muhammad sayyidina walina wa khairi wa sallim wa radiyallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala Ankuli sahabati rasulillahi ajma'in wa alhamdulillahi wa bi alameen Amin, amin, amin Rabbana atina fi dunya sanah wa fi al-akhirati asraka wa tina zabban nar Rabbana atina fi dunya sanah wa fi al-akhirati asraka wa tina zabban nar Rabbana atina fi dunya sanah wa fi al-akhirati asraka wa tina zabban nar وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين تقبل الله منكم انا ومنكم تقبل يا كريم Yeah. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, to everyone also. Thank you so much to Uncle Sadiq for uh, closing with a beautiful prayer. And thank you everyone for on the comments, the one who asked the questions, the one who literally tuned in all the way from 8 o'clock until today, 10 o'clock, we actually extended like I think about 45 minutes of extension, but they really stay tuned. Alhamdulillah, thank you everybody. So with that, I would like to also thank um, uh, the family and the National Gallery of Singapore for organizing this uh, it is something very very special for all of us something very special for all of us to to be sharing here today and uh it's difficult you know sometimes we have to talk about the din you it's so hard to control your tears sometimes but sometimes you just just got to do it like how my father would say it so once again thank you everyone and we hope to see you guys next time and We'll see you on our Tekken Pump chat. Just like, uh, no, last but not least, just like what Arwah Pak will say, it's okay, baby. You yeah. got it, baby. You got it, we baby. All, we all got it, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Arwah Pak, for everything. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.